Hi, you guys. It's First Impression Friday. Welcome back. We have our Vogue 2022 winter patterns to take a look at. And if we're judging by these two photos here, Biscuit is excited and I am too because these are cute. So if you are new here, this is my first impression video where I review an entire sewing pattern collection, um, whether that is a seasonal collection from the Big Five or a indie patterns like entire pattern catalog. Um, so... Welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you found me. If you like shopping for patterns, you're going to love this video. Um, but uh, introduce yourself in the comments so that I can get to know you a little bit better. For everybody else, please make sure that you are subscribed. You might think you are, but you are not. Um, and it just really helps other sewists find me. All right, so what to wear? The best fashion forward trends of the season. Shop the new collection. Let's do it. All right, first up, we have a coat. I do love Vogue's coats. Um, great construction. They're always done impeccably. If you want to like really go down a rabbit hole of sewing and construction, do a Vogue coat. It's fun. All right, Mrs. Coat in two links with color variations. Semi-fitted line coat has two long, wait, has long two-piece set-in sleeves with working vents, shoulder pads, side front pockets, side back and side front seams. Coat comes in length variations. View A is collarless. View B has a stand collar and patch pockets. And 8 to 16, 18 to 24, I'm sorry, 18 to 26. And they're giving this an average rating in terms of difficulty. But yeah, it's a pretty standard coat design. If you've been sewing for a while and you have coat patterns in your um, stash already, you probably have something similar to this. Um, but they've done them in tweed here, really beautiful application, um, but any like wool or coating fabric would do. It does look a little bit long on both of them. This little, I mean, I know that it's a very small sleeve cap, but this could definitely be up on her shoulder a little bit more. Um, and then I always, I don't know, is it just me? But I always, when they put pockets oh, over the bust and then put a random button there, it's like, headlights. Hello. <laughs> you know, it just draws attention to an odd part of a woman's body. If it were like up here somewhere, it would be a lot better. Um, I'm sure these buttons aren't even functional, so I'm not entirely sure what they're there for. But I love that you have the option of exposed buttons or this like button placket that covers them. Two very different like finishes, right? This one looks a little bit more streetwear and this one looks a little bit more like polished first lady. Right? Or wait, are those just clear buttons? Hold on. Yeah, they actually, I think they might just be clear buttons, right? You can see those. Never mind. I guess, though, clear buttons are a good choice because they kind of blend right in. But you have these pockets here with, I think, have like a welt finish. You have um, two-piece sleeves like they explained with sleeve vents. Let's see if we can get a look at those. Yeah, well, a little bit there. Did they do like a pearl button? Yeah, hard to tell what's going on there, but you can see the beautiful finish or the beautiful fitting here in the back with these princess seams, stunning. And then here's her long one. Yeah, you can see the sleeve vent a little bit better here. So two piece, here's the seam, and then there goes into a sleeve vent with three buttons that I think are working buttons, but maybe not. Yeah, like I said, pretty straightforward design. There are just button plackets on both of them. I don't know why I thought that one was covered. Those buttons blended in so well. But you do get bust starts here, and you get your little inseam pocket that are in the princess seams, and then a collar or no collar. All right, this is the pattern back. Oh, they put the description on here. That's nice. View A is collarless. Yeah, yeah, we went through all that. Okay, so fabrics. Wool and wool blends, tweeds, boucle, gabardine, medium weight linen. Yeah, this collarless version would be really pretty in linen. Um, and then it's probably fully lined. Uh, some interfacing also for sure. You'll probably use a lot of interfacing. Uh, so coat A is the shorter one. Yeah, about the same amount of fashion fabric and lining and then almost two yards of interfacing. 
And then the same for coat B, the longer one, just a little bit more of each of those for the extra length. And then you'll need shoulder pads, 18 buttons, and then a few more for the longer version. Finished garment measurements, we have finished bust of 38 and a half up to 55. So, but we don't have body measurements. So I can't tell you how much ease, but it is, you know, you should have like six inches of ease probably throughout your bust. Same for the waist and the hip would be more because it does kind of flare out. But yeah, if you don't have like a good like coat pattern, simple classic design, you can't go wrong. All right, Mrs. Double Breasted Jacket. We have Double Breasted Line Jacket has peak lapels, two-piece sleeves with working vents, shoulder pads, and lined patch pockets with flaps and top stitching. View A has contrast variation on the upper collar. Um, sizing is 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26, and they're giving this an advanced rating. Um, I can already tell you that the way that this collar is drafted will change your life. <laughs> I made it like a Vogue trench coat, I believe. I think it was Vogue. Remember like the beige trench coat with the burgundy piping that I did? I think that that collar was drafted the same way as this one. The way that it is constructed, it's like the collar facing and the collar piece themselves have like a different amount of curve to them or something. I don't know. And it creates this this collar that just folds over and hugs your neck in a way that you, I mean, it is like you finish, you're like, why am I doing all of this? It doesn't make any sense. And then you finish it and you're like, oh, I understand now. Um, it's a really, really, really beautiful collar and yeah, just the best collar construction I've ever done. All right. So we do have the shoulder pads. This one fits their shoulders a little bit better. Can you see how it's more like straight across, but it has the same like seam details. The only thing that's different is obviously the double breasted versus the button placket and then this collar, but you have these cool patch pockets, which kind of remind me of like a little bit of like equestrian vibes. Um, so I love this plaid version. This is obviously really beautiful too in this like pink satin or whatever, especially with the contrast white it just feels very like elegant. Like, I don't know where I'd wear that obviously, but, <laughs> um, if you had like a party and you didn't want to wear a dress, I think a blazer is an excellent idea, but you've got these beautiful seaming details here on the front. And then the back, yeah, a really nice back vent. Princess seams in the back. Here's your two piece sleeve. You can see just how the construct, I cannot rave enough about the construction on these collars. They're wonderful. Um, and then there is your sleeve uh, vent with the working buttons. And I do like how the pocket kind of curves around the body a little bit. That's also a nice detail. And then here's the other one. Again, they fit them beautifully through here, through the back. These princess seams do a lot of that work. The vent is doing a little bit more for her than the other girl, <laughs> simply because she probably just has like a fuller seat. But yeah, here are our line drawings. Yeah, they look exactly like the samples did. Good. Yeah, nice little coat pattern. This is recommending men's suiting. Why is it men's suiting? Can it just be suiting? What's the difference between men's suiting and women's suiting? That's silly. Wool crepe, brocade, and then the contrast for the collar can be in velvet. How cool would that be? Um, lining fabric in lightweight fusible. So lining and interfacing are the same for both views. And only because you have that contrast collar do the fashion fabric um, suggestions differ. A pair of shoulder pads, seven buttons, just two different sizes, and then your finished garment measurement. So you can see this one's a little bit looser than the last one. It's a little, just kind of more straight really too, so the hip is going to be more fitted. Nice. All right, what is next? Oh, okay, we have a, a literal gown. Um, full length dress with belt by Badgley Mishka. Fitted lined dress has round neckline with purchased beaded trim. Bodice had side, front, and back seams. 
shoulder flounces with horsehair braid, thread carriers, invisible back zipper, hook and eye closure, narrow hem. It includes a matching belt with a covered buckle. They're calling this advanced. 8 to 16, 16 to 24 on the size range. Yeah, so here's your beaded trim. Here are these flounce sleeves really are what separate this dress from any other like, you know, fitted like mermaid-ish gown. The horsehair braid goes into the hem and it creates this like, you know, ribbony type effect on the sleeve hem. Um, that's what's giving it that in addition to this like little pleat, I guess that's here is kind of what's giving it that not only the movement, but also causing it to kind of stand away from the body a little bit. Then a matching belt. Yeah, and just a really pretty hem. This might be some kind of like charmeuse or silk or something. I mean, it's a really pretty gown. That would be a pretty wedding dress. I mean, I know it's in white, so it's a little bit obvious, but Yeah, here are our line drawings. These are the thread carriers they mentioned for the belt buckle, or for the belt. Um, really, the only seaming you have in the front is this kind of like princess seam where one of the flounces, or maybe the entire flounce, is sewn into. Like, maybe this is all one, and it kind of just curves up and around your shoulder, and then back down the other side. That's what it kind of looks like to me. And then you have the back darting as well. Medium weight crepe, maybe that's what they used. Yeah, a mid weight would be better for that sleeve for sure. And also something to kind of hold that beaded trim. Like that stuff can be kind of heavy. Silk dubioni, jacquard, lining, belt backing, synthetic leather you would need for that. So that's got to be a pretty legit belt that you end up making. Um, the dress with the belt is five and three quarters of a yard, which... All things considered, isn't that much. Then lining and interfacing, then your belt backing. You'll need an invisible zipper, a hook and eye, four and a half yards of horsehair braid, a buckle, and beaded trim. If you're not into like gowns, you could definitely just make this short. It would still be fancy, like a cocktail dress, but... It doesn't have to be full length. Finished garment measurements, 55 and a half, I'm sorry, 35 and a half up to 50 for the bust. The waist is pretty fitted, 26 and a half up to 41. There is, a, I think the belt does a little bit of work, but not much. Then the hip is pretty fitted too, 37 up to 51 and a half. But yeah. Pretty elegant, everything you'd expect from Badgley Mishka for Vogue, right? Then we have this vintage one, my goodness. Vintage dress and over bodice with pannier. I talk about this every single time I review one of these vintage patterns. I don't know what this stuff means. <laughs> they have so many words that I don't know what any of that is. You guys that do the vintage stuff always leave wonderful, nice comments without like judging me too badly that just explain what this stuff is so please leave it in the comments um vintage vogue pattern circa 1957 full flared skirt joins a bodice top at waistline the draped pannier 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 it I guess, i'm guessing it's this thing with a bow is joined to the fitted over bodice <sighs> joins a bare top bodice Oh, ribbon lacing and bodice front is optional. So there's a, I don't know what a bare bodice versus an over bodice is. It, well, I don't understand why it's not just lining and then fashion fabric. So we'll just kind of flip through these really quickly. I don't understand the construction at all, but we do have darting here. Obviously it's strapless. Um, this little like tie up detail and then, oh, so wait, so the dresses are the same and this is a whole separate thing. What? <laughs> so that's the dress view a, and then you make view a 
plus this view B, you make a whole separate garment basically. Okay, well that's what a pannier is. Interesting, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot for sure. Um, yeah, 10 and a quarter yards plus three and an eighth for the over bodice. My goodness. Silk organdi, taffeta, barathea. I've never even heard of that. Moir, fail, chiffon, crepe. Oh, well, half of these I've never even heard of before. That and silk organdi, I think I've seen. I don't know the difference between organza and organdi. Certainly never heard of this or mori. Mm. French words difficult for me. Um, 16 inch zipper, wide ribbon, buttonhole twist thread. All of these things I've never even heard of before. <laughs> wide covered featherweight boning. Okay, I do know what that is. Um, pleated trim, seam binding, shank buttons, hooks and eyes and snaps. And there's your garment measurements. Yeah, that would be quite the undertaking to make this. But I mean, kind of cool, I guess. I wonder, like, what were the sales of these patterns like in 1957? Like, did they sell out of this? Did this go out in the catalog and, like, all the little moms all bought this and made those gowns for the holidays? Like, that's, that's how I romanticize it in my mind anyways. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Dress in two lengths. We've got loose fitting dress, has yoke detail, gathers, long, slightly flared sleeves, raised waist seam, front ties, flared bottom, invisible back zipper, and narrow hems. Dress comes in length and contrast variation. They're calling it easy, and the sizing is 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. I mean, okay. So we've got this one with the contrast here. I mean, this V, this is like we're down to her belly button. Like it's not far from her belly button, but it's got these gathers into the yoke. This like 70s fabric, I think is throwing me a little bit, especially with the contrast fabric. It's a little too like on the nose maybe. <sighs> Maybe I just see this a little bit not as a winter pattern. This feels like festival-ish to me, not like holiday party type of thing, which I think is what they're going for. But this is pretty cool. The neckline, how it goes, like it's grown on a little bit. And then you've got these gathers and then this little belt thing with more gathers down here. I don't know. It's kind of cool construction-wise. I just don't know where I would wear this, I think, is why I'm getting a little bit thrown by the seasonal choice. Ties in the back. All these gathers continue through that yoke and then an invisible back zipper. Oh, where did her hand go? <laughs> Bless her heart. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Now I'm getting like church choir vibes. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I think the right kind of fabric would go a long way with this. I'm not sold on it being solid. I'm not sold on it being that, you know, psychedelic print. I'm wondering if like an embroidered cotton or something might give it what it means. I don't know. I don't know. On the fence about this one. Um, lightweight crepe, rayon chalet, crepe back satin, and linen blends. A linen blend. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Fabrication, I think, is really going to make or break this one, though. All right, there's your fabric requirements. Yeah, it kind of takes a bunch of fabric. And then your finished garment measurements. We only get the bust, I guess, because it's loose fitting. And honestly, the bust is pretty loose fitting, too. All right. 
Next, we have <laughs> Sandra Bitsina coming at us with this. <laughs> Her stuff is like so too, it's so like bipolar. It's either like, I mean, it's all kind of quirky, but like sometimes the quirk is like okay. And then sometimes it's like, what is this? Um, so this is a top. But also, is this not a dress? Architectural zip front top comes in two lengths. Collar turns out in front and falls in folds when worn. Top has shaped armhole facings and detailed pockets. Advanced. And Sandra has her own fitting situation. So all the sizes are all in one. Okay, so... Construction wise, these little top stitching details are super cool. You have your zipper, um, separating zipper. Yeah, it's really just like a big, like imagine this thing flipped up. Um, it's just like a big rectangle kind of thing and then you just fold it down. Okay. Okay. Oh, then here it is in the back. Wow, that's a really cool like vent. I like how it goes all the way up like that. That's kind of a cool detail. And then yeah, you have your top stitching again. You have a yoke. Maybe the pleather is what's... I wonder what happened if you did it out of a less structured fabric. Yeah, can you see? I think in like a like a canvas or kind of like a mid-weight cotton or something, it could be like really interesting but not not like weird weird in a good way still weird I'm here for the weird just not here for the like confusion of it all this definitely helps see what's going on though for sure all right boiled wool faux leather linen yeah, like linen could be cool. Wool crepe. Gabardine. Yeah. Something, yeah, I think something like a little bit floppier might help. Okay, then here's your fabric requirements. You will need Wonder Tape, Steam a Seam. Yeah, I'm guessing because what? You can't. Uh, I don't know why. Separating zipper. And then here's your finished garment measurements. So if you're not familiar with her sizing, this is kind of where it puts you. Although none of it was really fitted. So. Yeah, it's interesting, right? I'm just trying to think, like... Especially with like the, I don't know, this, this might be growing on me. This is weird. This is, I'm not getting, the illustration's not helping at all either. But I do think out of something a little, where this just kind of lays down a little bit. You know, like it doesn't have to stick out like, like, like space. I'm thinking of like, uh, what's that show where they're from space and they had the like pointy collared jackets. That's what it's reminding me of. It was like a show in the 80s or something, maybe. All right, now we've got Mrs. Nightgown, but she's wearing high heels. I don't see why this is a nightgown. I would wear this out on the streets all day long. <laughs> Classy nightgown. <laughs> Has V neckline, shoulder pleats, self tie at waist, baby hems, and, an, and angular back seams. Nightgown includes long bishop sleeves with pleats, narrow binding, and slit opening at wrist with snap closure. Like, that is a full-on garment. Can be made mid-knee and evening lengths. Aren't all nightgowns meant for evening? <laughs> I don't have a day nightgown. So, yeah, beautiful. Look at these pleats into this, like, forward shoulder. Stunning. Wraps, ties. This is a beautiful application for this, like, satin fabric. I mean, really stunning. Floor length. I mean, she's got a purse. You know what I mean? Like, the homegirl's not going to bed. Yeah. 
yeah, this is really pretty. Now hers is a lot lower than hers. I don't know what that's about. And I only say that because I just want to know what I'm getting. Am I getting the low V or am I getting not so much? Although it does look really long on her. This is where the waist seam is. Her waist is way up here. So maybe that's it. It's just too big on her. Whereas it pretty much fits her perfectly. Oh, super cool. Look at that detail. That's fun. Yeah, this is really beautiful. Oh, you even have these like shoulder dart things. I literally have nowhere to wear this, but I mean, she's stunning. Yeah, really pretty. I'm certainly not wearing it to bed. That's for sure. What a waste. <laughs> yeah, really, really pretty. I love this one. So nice. So many great details through here with these darts and this little V thing. So cool. Okay. Uh, Charmeuse, which I think is what they used. Crepe de Chine, Rayon Chalet, Silk Broadcloth. And yeah, you need a lot of it. <laughs> um, two small snaps, half a yard of ribbon, and one button. And then here's your finished garment measurements, not super fitted anywhere. And do we do the sizing on this one? Six to 14 and then 16 to 24 with an average rating, difficulty rating. Okay, now we have this little number by Claire Schaefer. Partially lined, semi-fitted dress, has neckline pleats, stitched by hand, Claire, who do you think you are? With elastic straps placed inside on each side of neckline to hold pleats flat, elastic fastens at center back, what? Dress includes long set in sleeves, lingerie guards, which I think are like the little bra holder things, right? What's a lingerie guard? Back zipper also sewn by hand. Claire, please. I'm not entirely sure what she means by the elastic clasping at the back or fastening at the back. I, I don't, I don't know makes no like does it go underneath your armpit because that can't be comfortable and like do we have to do the zipper by hand it's like a lot of work for a dress that's not that great you know it's like kind of unremarkable considering how much couture work would go into it or contour construction at least Yeah, the line drawing certainly doesn't help um, explain any of that, what that construction stuff is. But I guess that's what you get with Claire Schaefer. I mean, she's she's the epitome of custom couturier atelier type of construction. Wool crepe, four ply silk crepe or wool jersey. And then Charmeuse or Crepe de Chine, obviously, for your lining. And then sew in hair canvas for your interfacing. So not a lightweight interfacing like usual. Here's your sizing, fabric requirements, including the lining, and then your interfacing. One zipper, a pair of lingerie guards. My best guess is that's like the little, what are they called, like bra carriers? Hem weights, wow, okay, hem weights, one yard of half inch wide elastic, two hook and eye closures. All right. So the bust and waist have the exact same finished garment measurements, and then the hip is really only a couple inches bigger, not even one and a half inches bigger than that. So very straight design, which is why you can see here in their little like attempt at determining flattery, whatever that means. Um, Inverted triangles for sure. I see that. Rectangles, absolutely. Um, and then because your shoulder and your hip are the same, 
hourglasses, but you just, you lose this. But what is not here are pears, <laughs> which is me and a lot of you from what I hear from you guys. So, all right, Claire. Thanks for coming to the TED Talk. All right, here's that other top from the little banner. Off the shoulder bodysuit. This is really, really nice. I like I like this a lot. And for the first time maybe ever, I'm not going to rag on them for using crushed velvet. Because this actually looks like elevated, elegant, really nice. In the past, they've used that on not the right stuff. And it's looked really, really cheap and old. But this looks really nice. Close fitting off the shoulder bodysuit has crossed bands that create a soft V neckline at the bodice and forms a fold over back. Bodysuit includes sleeve length variations and fastens with snap closures. But honestly, what I've been learning about these bodysuits is that most of them you can just pull on over your hips like a bathing suit. This is so wide up here, you don't need snaps. Although it does help you go to the bathroom, but like I'm, I'm fine with this robing in the stall. You know, there's a door, it's fine. <laughs> all right I'd rather get naked in a bathroom a gajillion times wearing this than have to deal with those snaps those things are so annoying and like impossible to snap yourself at least for me all right so yeah we have this little crossover design um with the little gather here at the shoulder you have a little three-quarter sleeve or really kind of like a half sleeve um and then a long sleeve yeah, I love this with like a nice pair of trousers. It's all you need for like most office holiday type of situations. Yeah, I mean, that's like the perfect, that's about as, that's about as dressy as I would go for just about any holiday party. I mean, maybe I would do something a little girlier, but here's the back. Yeah, it's really pretty. And I'm assuming that the kind of tension on this is what keeps it up, right? So you're not constantly tugging on it. I'm assuming that. Of course, I have to make it and wear it, but. Yep. All right. So they're recommending four-way stretch knits, rayon spandex, cotton spandex. See the stretch gauge, which you can't online, but you can once you get the pattern. Um, I don't know how that's helpful when you're trying to buy the pattern, but that's how they do it. So paper backed fusible webbing, 16 inch wide. That's interesting. And then two and a half yards ish snaps, the webbing and stay tape. Yeah. So she's got some, she's got some work into her you know what I mean it's not just like thrown together and hope for the best and then probably some negative ease through the bust is what I'm thinking and then maybe like zero or slightly negative ease at the waist because it is so stretchy I mean 75% cross grain stretch that's a lot that's a lot but yeah it's really nice really beautiful really elegant really simple perfectly my style um comfortable. Yeah. I'm here for all of that. I love this. Okay. Now we have a sleeveless top. Um, <laughs> lined sleeveless top has modified sweetheart neckline with intricate straps and bow detail on upper chest. Top includes empire seaming, Bus starts, an invisible bag zipper. View A has contrast on the straps and bow detail. Which lately they've just been doing contrast in like a same color but different texture. I kind of love, I love the back. The front feels a little, um, sex slave fish. <laughs> it feels a little, um, what's that? Like S&M? It feels a little like I've, I'm being tied, but that's just me. Maybe I'm like <laughs> iffy about it for, I don't know why. Maybe that's like an irrational thought I have in my mind. I'm not sure, but yeah, it feels like I just want to 
pull it down and get it off my neck. But I'm wondering like without the bow, I don't know. I wonder how many, how much of this you can leave off. Like I'm pretty sure you can leave it all off, right? And just have the back, which would be really pretty. But like even in the white one or goldish one, it's still not giving, I'm not liking it. It's still feeling very constrictive. I don't know the word. I, yeah, I don't know. It's like a lot. Yeah, but then you have this. This is the empire seaming they're talking about. You have these darts here and these. Also a center front seam. You could easily, easily lengthen this into a dress. Would I like it better as a dress? Like all of me wants to love that front neckline because I love bows. I love interesting things, but yeah, I'm not. Oh my God, is she snarling? She almost looks like she's giving like, ew. <laughs> Which is not ew, it's not that bad. We've seen way worse. I wonder if you were to like play around with all of this stuff and maybe consider leaving the bow off, maybe leaving this part off and only doing the wrap around, or if you, you know, only did one or the other, but not all three, if it would feel better. And I definitely want to see it as a dress for sure. But the back is really cute, especially in this brocade. Okay, so crepe, Mikado, silk dupioni, or polyester dupioni is also fine from me. I'm allowing you to do that. <laughs> Jacquard, and then some of it is lined, if not all. Uh, yeah, I think the whole thing is lined. Quite a bit of interfacing as well. So this ends up being like a pretty hefty little top. Maybe that's why they didn't show it as a dress version. And then pretty close fitting through the bust for sure. Waist is a little bit loose because technically your waist is like down here. So there is some of that A-line already happening. And then sort of semi-fitted at the hip. Which I think you can use your lower edge measurement as your hip since that's where it basically ends. Right? That's at your low hip for the most part. All right, now we go from S and M to a hoodie, because that's how Ho that's how Vogue likes to switch things up. Mrs. Jacket in two lengths by Marcy Tilton. Semi fitted jacket in two lengths features an asymmetric front with separating zipper, princess seams, two piece sleeves. And lining in welt pockets. View B has a hood. It is a cool jacket. I feel like... Do I have something like this already? I feel like maybe I do, but I don't... I can't recall it. Wait, isn't this, um... Oh, shoot. The closet core coat. Remember, I did it in pink for those of you that have been around for literally years. Um... God, what was that? What is that coat called? Claire? The Claire coat? That might be close to what this is. Um, but I do love the asymmetry. I like the welt pockets. The top stitching, I don't know. It could be here nor there without that. But um, this, I think, is a maybe a Ponty. This looks like something Stylemaker Fabrics has. And then you have the hood. I want to see it without the hood on also. Yeah, it's a cool little jacket, right? That's interesting seeming in the back. That's really what Marcy's kind of known for. Yeah, it's a cool little fun coat for sure. So I think the clear coat mimics the front only and then it's longer. None of this is happening in the back and I can't remember if it's a two-piece sleeve or not. Stretch woven such as denim twill, lightweight fabric, or sorry, 
jacket weight fabric with stretch, but probably not a lot. Like I'm thinking like a, some kind of stretch woven, like a sateen or something. Stable knits or like a denim can have stretch in it, I guess. Stable knits such as Ponte or lightweight scuba. And then interfacing, lining. Yeah, jacket A is under, wait, that's interfacing A. Jacket A is two and a half. Okay, I see. Lots of interfacing. Heavy duty top stitching thread, 16 inch separating zipper or 18 inch for the long one. And then here is your finished garment measurements, kind of like they said in the description, loose fitting. Maybe a little bit closer once you get down to the hip area. But I think pear shapes should be making crop jackets anyways. Yeah, it's cool, edgy. Okay, here is our second vintage pattern. Mrs. Vintage Suit and Coat. Circa 1949, collarless jacket. That looks like a collar to me. But maybe they're talking about the yellow one. With deep shaped flaps, simulating pockets. Is that what this is? Straight three quarter length coat. Oh, okay. It's a collarless jacket. It's a jacket and a coat. Okay. Very slim three piece skirt has pleat at center back. Straight three quarter length coat with two flat pockets and single button closing at neck has wide turned down collar straight sleeves and vent at center back seam. <sighs> yeah, it's a suit with a coat. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Definitely giving 40s. Oh, interesting. I mean, looking at all these things separately with the line drawings. I mean, that's kind of a cool coat. Just, I mean, it's just a cool coat. I don't know why it seemed so like, I don't fussy. Even the jacket seemed like, I don't know, weird, but it's not, it's kind of cool. I have a skirt that has this little detail that I made once. It was like this little thing was sewn in to the waist seam. Anyways, yeah, all right, sure. Tweed, flannel, lightweight woolen, worsted wool, hair canvas inward facing again, button, button, cotton batting, maybe for like some kind of sleeve head, zipper or six snaps, hooks and eyes and no finished garment measurements on the pattern. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be a super simple coat to sew, right? Even if you did these pockets just straight across to eliminate that point would make it simpler. But like, it just buttons here, nowhere else, right? So then you have your little collar. Yeah, I, I mean, okay. I could see that being very modern, not looking like, you know, a vintage piece of clothing at all. Okay, now we have this Mrs. Knit Top Dress and Pants. This is cool. 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26 on the size range here. Top and dress are loose fitting through bust and have asymmetric off the shoulder necklines. Both top and dress include extra long sleeves with thumb hole cups and stitch hems. Below waist pull on pants, so you get the pants too, um, have elasticized waist and stitched hem. Okay, the dress is so freaking cool. This feels very like fabletics, like athleisure, but sexy. Um, and then the leggings with the top are okay. I wish maybe the top was shorter. This is a very, mm, I hate to say matronly, but you know, just a tunic with leggings. I don't know. 
But yeah, all of this is really cool. And this little asymmetrical scene. Yeah. She's snarling again. So I think that might just be her resting face or her like, this is her modeling face. I don't really think she thinks she looks ew in this. She looks exceptional. Oh, why'd they take her shoes off? That's weird. Um, okay, yeah, here it is. It's kind of giving 80s in a way, but also not. Yeah, I like this one too. So, so far the knit patterns are really what's been doing it for me on this one. So this only has 35% stretch. So think of like sweater knits and things like that. Jersey, rib knit, ponty knit. I don't know that ponty knit has 35%. Maybe some of it, but I'd be surprised. And some of your rib knits are going to have way more than 35%. I don't know about these recommendations. Then top and dress and pants. Elastic. And then here's your finished garment measurements. Yeah, the bust is going to be very loose fitting. Waist pretty much loose fitting too. And then the hip is going to be what's close fitting. I love this dress. You could dress it up, dress it down. Here for it. Yeah, that's a good one. And then finally we have a men's coat, which probably will end up being unisex. I don't see why. If you want like a boxy boyfriend type of style, you could totally make this as a woman or a man. Fully lined, slim fit coat, has notched collar, two-piece sleeve, shoulder pads, welt pockets, and back vent. So, yeah, I love this, like, um, almost like a shawl collar on a coat. That's kind of cool. And then you do have some darting here. Your welt pocket, nice sleeve, pretty slim fitting, shoulder, uh, see, what is it called? Uh, sleeve head, vent for your sleeve what's the back like yeah pretty standard yeah man or woman I love this so if a woman makes it it's just going to be a little bit broader through here which is what gives it that kind of like boxy boyfriend oversized kind of vibe but that's all still very much like in Wool blends, gabardine, denim. Denim? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, lining fabric, lightweight fusible for your interfacing. Here's your fabric requirements. Wow, four yards of interfacing. So a lot of this is interfaced. Maybe the whole body. Um, and then some buttons and shoulder pads. And then here are your finished measurements. Okay, that's the coat. Okay, you guys, that's it. That is Vogue Winter 2022. What did we think? I think they have a, um, what's it called? Like a lookbook? Winter? Oh, lookbooks? Hold on, let me find it. Vogue Patterns Lookbook. Here we are. Okay. This way we can review them like a magazine. All right. What did we think? Of course, I love the two knit patterns, the dress and then this bodysuit. Um, but there's a lot of really great kind of like wardrobe builders in there too, um, which is unique for Vogue because normally it's so like I don't want to say trendy, but you know, it's like a little bit high end, a little bit couture that it can be very specific. But a lot of this stuff I think you could make for many different occasions. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. As always, please leave a comment in the comment section below, letting me know what your thoughts are on the collection as a whole or which patterns you're excited to grab at the next Joanne sale. Um, yeah, I love reading those. So please leave your opinions in the comment section. But other than that, I guess that's going to do it for me today, y'all. 
lots to kind of mull over here with this collection, but um, but yeah, I'm here for it. Nice. It's a nice, good mid-range collection for Vogue. Not too crazy, not too simple. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go now. Okay. <laughs> See you guys soon. Bye.